Okay, our next talk is going to be given by Olivier Roy from um, MSD in the States again. And this is on efficacy of uh, flinixin miglumine poron administration in a tissue cage model of inflammation. Good morning. Hi. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm not from MSD. I'm working for CBFAR or CRO located in France. So, uh, um, I'm presenting today okay, an experimental work we, we have done on behalf of uh, MSD Animal Health. I would like to thank you today. Sorry about that. Yeah. And uh, it is the uh, evaluation of the efficacy of uh, flinixin meglubin when administered uh, topically in, uh, in cattle. And this uh, uh, study was uh, done to assess the, the uh, production of uh, prostaglandin E2 in uh, inflammatory exudate in a tissue cage model. So this tissue cage model was uh, uh, described and published by uh, Professor Espinas a long time ago from uh, the Vet School of Toulouse. And we reproduced this model a few years ago to uh, evaluate and compare the efficacy of flinixin meglubin when uh, in an injectable solution uh, to another anti-inflammatory drugs. And this time, we did it for the uh, topical administration. For this, we use a crossover design, uh, in such as uh, each animal receives both of the products that were tested. And in each time, we uh, uh, sample the uh, uh, inflammatory exudate to assay the concentration of prostaglandin E2. So you know uh, about the prostaglandin E2. We consider this is a, a, a major uh, inflammatory marker. Uh, since this is a very, uh, there, there is an obvious response in the inflammatory process. Uh, this is relevant in terms of uh, evaluation, um, assaying uh, compared to over inflammatory uh, marker like uh, thromboxane, for example. Uh, we know this is one of the uh, major uh, mediator of the inflammation involved in the arachidonic acid cascade. Uh, and in, in terms of uh, activity, we know that flinixin meglubin is a non-specific inhibitor of the COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes. That's why we have chosen this, uh, this uh, uh, prostaglandin. Uh, prostaglandin is uh, derived enzy enzymatically from fatty acid. We know that this is involved in the vasodilatation, uh, vascular permeability, and fever, and, uh, and of course, pain. And most, more specifically in our study, because we, we needed to produce uh, inflammatory exudate, this is one of the uh, major agents for that. So this, uh, this slide is to summarize uh, the study design. The crossover design, as you know, is that one animal, for example, in group A, I don't know if I can show. Yeah, one animal in group A receives the first time brufnixin, and the second time it receives saline. And on the contrary, the animals of group B, one, at the first phase, receive saline, and the second phase, they receive the, the other product. So the, this study was done with three phases. The first one was the implement, implantation of the tissue cage under the skin, I will show you. And uh, the two of us period correspond to the challenge and the sampling uh, treatment and sampling of the exudates. So this is a picture of the facilities where we have done the study. So we involved, uh, we included uh, two, uh, six uh, dairy cows and six uh, young bovine. This was done in a GLP facilities uh, with an ethical review of the protocol, of course, and uh, the animals were uh, housed in open barns. So that's a picture of the, uh, the uh, what we say, the tissue cage. Actually, it's uh, just practice golf balls. Uh, it's polypropylene perforated balls that were, of course, uh, disinfected and inserted into under the skin uh, according to a surgical uh, procedure, of course. <coughs> this is a picture you can see, it's uh, at the end of the study, so there are some hair on the, on the skin, of course, but this is a, a picture when we sample the uh, exudate directly from the, from the balls. The challenge uh, were, was done twice, so once at D0 and the second time at uh, D14, 
and uh, challenging consisted in the injection of uh, an irritant solution of uh, carrageenan solution. And we had three, four balls in each animal. And just after the challenge, we made the treatment. The treatment was done according to the uh, marketing authorization specification for phenidine uh, uh, transdermal. And of course, uh, NSL was done according to the same scheme. So it was one milliliter for 15 kilo, uh, kilogram of body weight along the back's midline. Of course, there is no contact between the test product and the balls themselves. Just after this treatment, we started collection of uh, the exudate from the, directly from the, the balls uh, at different time points up to 48 hours after the challenge. So I, we took three balls, we uh, sampled three balls out of four from each animal, and those uh, samples were mixed and uh, sent for assays after a, a lot of precaution regarding the, uh, uh, the stopping the, the pr uh, inflammatory process. For instance, we put all the tubes in fr uh, fr ice, we uh, stop the uh, inflammatory uh, reaction by endometacin into the tube and so on. The uh, analytical files for, was done in a GLP laboratory using a UHPLC MSMS method according to a validated method, so I don't go into the details. And that's the results we obtain. So we observe a, a, a huge difference uh, in terms of uh, time course of this concentration. Uh, for instance, the uh, meglux, flunixin meglubin uh, curve the red one was always uh, under the one obtained with the uh, saline group. In the saline group, we had a very uh, low peak. You know, the, the, the curve is flat with the flunixin meglubin group, whereas we had a, a, a high peak uh, in the saline group. And at the time of the peak, uh, the concentration were almost 20 times higher with saline compared to uh, flinixin. And we observed also that at the end of the uh, sampling period, there were no return to basal level, especially in the saline group. When we consider the uh, concentration of prostaglandin compared to the uh, pre-dose, uh, we, we saw that uh, there is a, a sharp increase of the after injection uh, in both groups of course, and uh, especially in the saline group. The, the increase was more limited with flinixin. Uh, at the peak, we had only an, an increase of almost 300%, uh, whereas it was uh, almost 3,000 uh, percent in the saline group. And as I told you, there is no return to basal level for saline. Uh, now, considering the comparison between uh, the two treatments, or let's say the two groups, uh, at each time point, uh, there is a percentage of reduction in the phoenixing group compared to saline, which was up to 95% uh, at the peak, and remained about uh, almost 90% uh, till the end of the observation period. And in terms of values, uh, as I told you, it's almost 20 times more uh, prostaglandin E2 in the exudate collected from the uh, NSL tr uh, tr treated animals. We did some statistics, uh, and uh, we had the statistical analysis performed for each period separated and for both period cumulated. Uh, and at the end, what we observe is a statistical difference from uh, 8 hours to 20, uh, 48 hours after treatment, uh, as you see, with obvious results. I'm sorry. One more. Oh, can I go back? Sorry, trying to fix it. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Too fast. Uh, I have one more thing about the conclusion. Yeah, it's just to say that 
Uh, again, this is uh, really specific. We understand this is not, uh, it's, it's only focused on the concentration of prostaglandin. So the purpose was to assess if flunexin indeed reduce the uh, production of prostaglandin. Uh, but of course, uh, in this model, there is no over signs like uh, hyperthermia, clinical signs, which was not the, the, the objective of the study. Uh, what we can say after the treatment is that there is a rapid speed of action because uh, uh, since uh, two, hours up, uh, two hours after the treatment, we observe a reduction of this uh, production of prostaglandin. This is a potent anti-inflammatory uh, activity since the, uh, the concentration were obviously and strongly reduced compared to non-controlled uh, treatment. And uh, in terms of uh, duration of treatment, the effect could be observed till 48 hours after the challenge, which was quite short, maybe because we have uh, uh, compared this study to other study and we wanted to, to have the same duration. But finally, uh, uh, due to the results we obtain, we may have a, a longer period to see uh, how long it, it could last uh, after this, this uh, time point. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, please do not hesitate. Okay, we've time for a few questions. Maybe I, I could start. Um, is there anything special about the flunixin formulation in the transdermal? Yeah, that's, uh, that was uh, probably a question at the, at the beginning. We wanted to know if there is uh, an effect of this administration. Uh, compared to what we know about the injectable product. Uh, that's why also we were very uh, uh, precautious about the uh, application. So it was done, as I told you, according to the uh, marketing authorization uh, specification on the uh, mid-like bike. Uh, so for us, uh, there is exactly the same mode of action. And it was interesting to see if there is a, a delayed effect, uh, less effect, uh, or a higher effect, and finally, uh, in this study, we observe uh, this obvious effect. So I think there is no no major uh, difference. So does the flunixin cross the skin, or is it in a solvent that helps it cross? Or? Absolutely, that, that is not the purpose of the study. I know. Because of course, uh, pharmacokinetic studies have been done by mm -hmm. the, uh, the the laboratory, but uh, definitively, yes, it across. Uh, yes. Any other questions? I missed the timing. When was the flunixin applied? Just after the uh, challenge itself. So the okay. challenge was the uh, induction of inflammation by injecting the yeah. carrageenan solution into the bowl. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just after, we uh, administrate the treatment uh, to the animals. So you might get different effects if you apply the flunixin later on? Or yeah, probably. Earlier. It could be another study, but yeah. okay. <laughs> not this time. OK, time for one last question. Otherwise, we're going to move on. Yes, go ahead. Um, for, for how long, or how did you handle in your trial your pairing of animals in the pens? How long did you have to keep them restrained to prevent any licking and potentially cross-contamination into your control group? You mean after the treatment itself? Right, right. Yeah, they, they, were, uh, yes, they were separated uh, during the treatment uh, for uh, well, a, a few hours. But uh, and we, we, are, we were sure there were no no uh, leaks between animals, no communication, no contact between animals. Do you, feel, do you have a feel for how long that period needs to be? If you treated an animal, how long you would have to keep it separate for, to prevent it from contaminating another animal as far as a residue uh, or something like that would be? I think that's, uh, that's a good question for the laboratory itself. <laughs> I'm not uh, informed about that, but uh, I don't know if there is a real risk of uh, cross-contamination between animals. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>